Soft-spoken and small in stature, the nearly 78-year-old Terrence Miller was a much younger man when investigators say he preyed upon 20-year-old Jody Loomis in August 1972. It was still daylight when detectives say the young woman was sexually assaulted and shot in the head in the woods in Mill Creek. Earlier that day, Jody had left her Bothell home to head to the stables, something she did routinely. But it was the first time she had ever ridden her bike there alone. This was such an innocent victim. She was just riding her bicycle down the road when she ended up being raped and murdered. And it's the oldest case that we have here in Snohomish County where we have DNA evidence. It's the kind of cold case investigators dream of solving. And incredibly, 47 years after the murder, that DNA evidence led Detective Scharf to a suspect using forensic genealogy. Using the DNA to build a family tree led detectives to Terrence Miller, a lifelong Edmonds man who, by all accounts, was a stranger to Jody Loomis. She had her whole life ahead of her. It was just taken away, just taken away. And we live with that every day. When Jody was killed, Miller would have been 30 years old. For detectives and Jody's loved ones, an arrest for her murder was a monumental moment, a time when justice finally seemed possible. But a couple months after Miller was arrested, those close to the case got some startling news. How could this be? How can this happen? Do you hear of this? I mean, we've never heard of this happening before, that he could be out that he could go home to his house, go home to his wife. It was pretty hard to believe that somebody could bail out on a million dollars bail. And it's the only case that I can think of in my 42 years in law enforcement where somebody bailed out on a first degree murder charge. I mean, murder, murder, and he's at home and we have the DNA. When Miller was charged with first degree murder, prosecutors asked the judge to set the bail at $1 million, a standard number for murder cases. What's not standard is a defendant being able to come up with the funds to make that bond. According to court documents, Miller used a bail company that tells us defendants have to pay them 10% of the bond, and that's money the defendant will never get back. In this case, Miller would have had to pay $100,000 in order to get the comforts of home while waiting to stand trial. It concerns me that he's out there where, you know, he can move around in the community if he wants to. He is on electronic home monitoring, but you always wonder how, you know, accurately that's system works. In addition to having to wear an ankle monitor, Miller is under other restrictions, such as only being permitted to leave the house for certain reasons, like court, grocery shopping, and doctor's appointments. But that's little consolation for Jody's family. I don't think that this is right. Um, the family were devastated by that fact, and what could happen, there's a lot of risk at letting someone bail out in a murder case. We wanted to speak with Terrence Miller about his charges and the large sum of money he's paid to avoid being behind bars, at least for now. Miller declined to speak on camera, but tells me he paid the $100,000 bond in full. Terrence Miller's trial is scheduled to begin on June 5th. Now, today, the judge made it clear he doesn't want the case pushed back any longer. As he said, due to the age and the importance of the case, he wants it before a jury sooner than later. It's really